Hi, I'm David Skidmore. In today's lesson, we're going to focus on a stroke type that we briefly introduced in a past lesson, the triple lateral stroke. In today's lesson, we're going to focus on the sticking 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 1. There are other triple lateral stickings, like for instance, 1, 2, 1, 3, 4, 3. Or 2, 1, 2, 4, 3, 4. But the sticking that we're using, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 1, is probably the most common triple lateral stroke sticking and has a really nice flow to it. We'll also be focusing today on narrow intervals and we'll be talking about the musical concept of a hemiola. And if you've never heard that word before, don't worry about it. We're going to be talking a bunch more about it later. So to get started, let's focus on this triple lateral stroke. The first exercise is a pattern that repeats many, many times throughout the etude. And when you repeat this bar, you're playing back-to-back -back triple lateral strokes. Stay relaxed as you gradually work up the tempo with this new technique. It's important that your hands stay relaxed and that your grip on the mallets be very loose and relaxed. The motion is made almost entirely with the wrists. Try this exercise at a really wide range of dynamic levels. When you're playing the exercise loud, forte, make sure that each of the three notes of the triple lateral stroke are even dynamically. And when you're playing the exercise at a quiet dynamic, like piano or pianissimo, make sure that you're not ghosting any of the notes, but that each of the notes of each triple lateral stroke speaks. In the second exercise, we'll take this basic pattern and give it a little bit of musical direction by adding some dynamic shapes to it. The music in this etude has a really natural flow to it, and the crescendos and diminuendos are really important to creating this shape. So focus on your stick heights, keep your hands nice and relaxed, and give this exercise a try. Now you may have already noticed that there's something funny going on here between the rhythm and the time signature. The printed time signature of these exercises and etudes is 3-4, which means that there should be three beats per measure and the quarter notes taking the beat. The pattern we're playing is actually called a hemiola. And a hemiola happens when the music you're playing sounds like one time signature, but it's actually written in another time signature. So this pattern sounds like it's in 6-8, but it's actually written in 3-4. Hemiolas are actually tons of fun. They've been used by musicians for centuries, from German and English composers in the Baroque era, to Ewe musicians in Ghana and Togo, all the way to rock and pop artists who are working today. When playing a hemiola, it's really important to not allow it to affect your time. So let's practice exercise number three with a metronome. You probably feel that time shift between the first two measures of the exercise and the third measure of the exercise because those first two measures are kind of implying a different time signature, 6-8, and that third measure sounds very much like it's in 3-4. This happens several times throughout the etude, so when you're practicing with a metronome, see if you have any tendencies. See if you tend to rush when you're playing the 6-8 or drag a bit when you're playing the 3-4, and be aware of those tendencies. Keep them in mind for when you're playing without a metronome. Now we've spent a couple of lessons focusing on wider intervals like an octave, but in this lesson we're going to focus on narrow intervals like seconds and thirds. 
If you're using the Stevens grip or modified Musser grip, playing double vertical strokes at a narrow interval probably will feel perfectly natural and comfortable. If you're using the Burton group, you may have to remove your index finger from between the mallets to get that interval of a second. But the biggest change that you'll notice is when you're playing double lateral and triple lateral strokes at a narrow interval. It takes a lot of energy and a strong turn of the wrist to get a nice full sound at a narrow interval with a double lateral, triple lateral stroke. For instance, check out exercise number 4A. Play through the exercise at a nice slow tempo but a full volume and pay attention to how much more energy it takes to play double lateral strokes at narrow intervals in your right hand as opposed to a wider interval of fifth in your left hand. Even though you aren't asked to do this in the etude, I've also included an exercise where you can focus on playing double lateral and triple lateral strokes at narrow intervals in your left hand. That's exercise 4B. This is just something to be aware of as you're playing. If you ever find yourself playing double lateral or triple lateral strokes at a narrow interval, ask yourself, am I creating the sound that I want to? Is the sound full enough? Are my hands matching if they're at different widths of interval? Basically, all you want to do is avoid having narrow intervals sound weaker than you want to. Now finally, let's talk about incorporating tenuto markings into triple lateral strokes. Since the very beginning of this lesson series, I've been telling you that stick heights equal dynamics, and that's still true 99% of the time. However, when you're trying to have an accent pop out in the middle of a triple lateral stroke, you can't rely on stick heights to produce that louder, fuller sound on the tenuto marking. The tenutos in this lesson are not produced by stick heights, but rather by a snap of the wrist that produces just a little bit more force to bring those notes out of the texture. Now try exercise number five. Don't overthink this too much. Keep your hands nice and relaxed and just give a little bit of emphasis to all of those notes where you want to have a tenuto. And be sure to look closely at the notation for this etude because the tenutos do move back and forth between the right hand and the left hand. Be sure to check out my performance of the complete etude that's a part of this lesson. Thanks for watching.